Hello Year 6, welcome to your first quiz with me. You have got two rounds of questions. Each round has eight questions in it and we've got all the answers at the end. You could play this on your own, but you could also play it in your class or with your family. Let's get started. Grab something to write with. Round one. Can you solve this number sentence? Think about order of operations. Eight plus eight times eight minus eight divided by eight equals Question two. The sun's rays tiptoed into the room. What type of figurative language is in this sentence? The sun's rays tiptoed into the room. Question three. Do you recognize this tiny little bird? What type of bird is it? Question four. What is two fifths divided by four? I'm going to move on, but if you would like a little bit longer to work that out, press pause now. Question five. Do you know who this poet is? What is his name? Question six. Trainers cost £23.79 per pair. I buy four pairs. I pay with two £50 notes. How much change will I get? Okay, if you'd like a little bit longer, please press pause. Otherwise, let's move on to question seven. Can you correctly spell these words? Conscience, necessary, separate. Conscience, necessary, separate. And finally for this round, question eight. My train leaves at 8.18 a.m. and it takes 27 minutes to reach the station from my house. So for me to leave my house, walk to the station, takes 27 minutes. I also need an extra five minutes once I get to the station to buy a ticket. What time should I leave home? So my train leaves at 8.18, takes me 27 minutes to get to the station, and I need an extra five minutes to buy a ticket. What time should I leave home to catch that train? The answers for round one are coming up, but if you want to go back to any of those questions or pause for a bit longer on this question, please do. Round one answers. Question one. Well, order of operations or bod mass or bid mass, as you may know it, tells us that we need to multiply and divide before we add or subtract. So I've rewritten the number sentence, having completed the multiply and divide parts. So eight times eight is 64, eight divided by eight is one. Once I've replaced those two, having prioritized them, I then read from left to right because plus and minus are of equal importance. Eight 
plus 64 minus 1 equals 71. This is an example of personification. The sun's rays cannot actually tiptoe into the room. So we are giving human qualities to something that isn't human. So we could think of the word person helping us remember that that is what personification means. Question three, this tiny little bird is a hummingbird and it is drinking the nectar in these tiny little flowers. So when we're dividing fractions, is a handy way to do it is to remember, keep it, change it, flip it. Now, let me talk you through that if you haven't seen that before. So first things first, I need to recognize that four is actually the same as four divided by one. If we have a whole number, we want to keep it as a whole number, but we need it as a fraction, we can just put it as over one, because if we divide anything by one, it remains as itself. So then I would have had two fifths divided by four over one. Now I can do my keep it, change it, flip it, my KCF. I keep two fifths exactly as it is. I change divide to multiply and I flip four over one and flip it upside down to become one over four. Once I've done that, it's a simple multiplication of fractions. You may remember when we multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators together, and then we multiply the denominators together. Two times one equals two, five times four equals 20. So we have two twentieths. Even better if you manage to then simplify that to one over 10. Question five, this is Benjamin Zephaniah, um, who wrote, you may know the poem Talking Turkeys, but he's written a huge uh, amount of poetry um, which is really incredible to read if you get the chance to have a look. Question six. This was a two-step problem. You needed to multiply 23.79 by four. Remember when we multiply decimals, we can think of ignoring the decimal point. So we could think of it as 2379 times four and then pop the decimal point back in at the end depending on how many digits were after the decimal point in the question. So here there was the digits seven and nine after the decimal point in the question. So we need two digits after the decimal point in the answer, making it 95.16 or 95 pounds, 16 pence. If we pay with two 50 pound notes, well, we've given the shopkeeper a hundred pounds. So we need to subtract 95 0.16 from 100 pounds, remembering to line up our columns, remembering pounds and pence. So we will need a decimal point in that 100 pounds with two zeros. And then it's a case of exchanging all the way along from the one to get an answer of four pounds 84. Conscience, necessary, separate. Three tricky words. You can think of conscience as conscience as a way to remember it. Necessary, one C, two S's. Separate or separate. Children often put an E in the middle instead of an A. Think of it as in the middle of that word is a rat. Sep, a rat. So separate. And question eight, you would need to leave 32 minutes before 8.18 a.m. because 27 plus five is 32 which will be 7.46 a.m. If you want to go back and look at any of those, please do. Uh, but otherwise, add up your scores, compare with your friends, and then we're going to move on to round two. Question one. The dragon's breath scorched the marshmallow. Can you rewrite this sentence using the passive voice? This sentence has been written in the active voice. Can you rewrite it in the passive voice? Question two, the ratio of vanilla to chocolate cupcakes is two to three. So for every two vanilla cupcakes, there are three chocolate ones. A box contains 30 cupcakes. How many of those 30 cupcakes would be chocolate?
Pause if you would like longer. Question three. In which part of the river does the water flow fastest, upper, middle or lower course? Question four. Which of these is smaller, 15% of 60 or 3 eighths of 24? You might need a little bit of time to work this out. So press pause now to calculate this. Okay, question five. Do you know whose self-portrait this is? So who painted this picture of themselves? Which artist? Question six. Owls don't have eyeballs. Is that true or false? Question seven. Can you unscramble this determiner? So you've got a six letter word. If you rearrange those six letters that you've been given, you can spell a common determiner. Pause now if you would like a little bit more time to work that out. Question eight. Victor is Y years old. So he's an unknown quantity, which we are giving the value of Y. Lois is two years older than Victor. The sum of their ages is 40. How old are Victor and Lois? Press pause now if you would like some thinking time. Okay, time for the answers of round two. Here we go, question one. We wanted to rewrite this sentence in the passive voice. So the marshmallow was scorched by the dragon's breath. So if you think of a sentence having a subject and an object, the subject being the noun that is doing something and the object being the noun that's having something done to it, you can see that in our passive voice sentence, the object has switched to the front of the sentence. So the marshmallow is the noun that is having something done to it. And you will find in passive voice sentences that this goes at the front usually and we see often the words was by in passive voice sentences. Question two. So a bar model would help you with this. Um, you can think of my five cupcakes lined up there as being a bar model. I've got two parts and three parts, two parts of vanilla, three parts of chocolate. I have five parts in my bar model altogether. There are in a unit of two to three, there are five parts altogether. If I think about how many parts of five there are in the number 30, there are six. So I could repeat this diagram of two to three six times to create 30 cupcakes altogether. If I did that, I would find that three times that six times would be 18 cupcakes. So there would be 18 chocolate cupcakes. The upper course of the river has the fastest flow. It often has the greatest gradient difference. And so water flows quickly down a steeper gradient. This was actually a little bit sneaky. It was a trick question. They're equal. They are both equal to nine. Quick way to work out 15% is to find 10% by dividing by 10. 10% of 60 is six. And then 5% is just half of 10%. So that would be three. So you would have six plus three is nine. Three eighths of 24, well, we would need to divide 24 by eight and then multiply that by three, which would also give us a value of nine. This was Frida Kahlo's self-portrait. Actually, owls don't have eyeballs. They have something called eye tubes. A determiner, remember, is a word that we can place in front of a noun to tell us which noun or whose noun or how many. And in this case, it's the word plenty. 
Final question, a little bit of algebra, a little bit simple algebra. So we can think of Victor being y years old. So we could then express Lois's age as y plus two because she's two years older. We know that when we add Victor and Lois's age together, it equals 40. Well, we've got an expression for Victor's age, it's y, and we have an expression for Lois's age, that's y plus two. So if we add those two expressions together, y plus y plus two, we can say it's equal to 40. Then we want to collect like terms together. So we've actually got two y plus two. We've got y plus y, which makes two y plus two, still equal to 40. Now we want to subtract that two from both sides to help us simplify our expression down to two y equals 38. Once we know that, we divide both sides by two, helping us discover that y equals 19. So Victor was y years old, so Victor is 19, and Lois was two years older, so she is 21. We can check that we're correct by putting those values into our equation to check that it works. Or we could add 19 and 21 and we would find that it is 40. Time to add up your scores from both rounds and compare with your friends. Finally, there's a couple of other things you might want to know about. I have a great times table program with lots of puzzles and games and also some really fun ways to learn comprehension. Thank you for playing. Hope to see you again another time.